This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha! How you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Hibachi Talk. I have my my new and famous and infamous co-host, <laughs> Rick's the Fun Meister. Nice to see you here, sir. Hey, Gordo. And we have a great guest today, J.P. Schmidt Esquire, which stands for attorney. I don't know how why that is, but it is Esquire. And you have, Old time. Yeah, you have a, a terrific background, and we're going to talk about blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and what's happening in the legislature and things like that. So pull up a chair, grab a libation, sit down, join us for the next 30 minutes, and we will um, go over what's happening in this, in one of my favorite spaces in the industry of technology right now. So JP, you are um, uh, the uh, sole proprietor, owner of Abar Abaris? Abaris Global, Abaris yes. Global, um, yes. and we're going to learn a little bit about that. Uh, in a second, and you're also sit as an advisor on the Ethereum Foundation, Correct. which is a cryptocurrency. So you you bring that to the table. So you've got some expertise there. But before we jump into Abaris and, and Ethereum, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like 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 you know, where did you go, go to school? Where did you grow up? A little bit so our viewer our viewer can know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I was born and uh, grew up in upstate New York, and when I was 16, folks moved to Glendale, California. So I finished high school there and went to UC uh, universities, UCLA and UC Davis Law School. And uh, about six years after law school, I moved out to Maui. Wow. And uh, began working there and became deputy corp counsel for the county of Maui. And then became the corporation counsel for the county of Maui. Oh, and uh, uh, worked in private practice for a short time. And then I was appointed the insurance commissioner for the state of Hawaii. And, uh, That's when Mr. Maurer met you, I think, when yeah. you were an insurance commissioner. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, um, it was from you. about, uh, you're welcome, 2003, 2010. And my attitude was that I was there to help folks out. So. Um, that's rather anti. That's rather anti-government of you. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, you. I, 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 I've seen your presentations. You know, you said that some people like to be adversarial and yes. hostile. Yes. I'm that one, yes. and you're the one that tries to make it all work out nice. <laughs> yes, I, I believe in solutions. Yeah. I believe in dealing with reality and dealing with solutions, and so I tried to bring that as insurance commissioner, and uh, I believe the best way you do that is to to talk to everybody that I don't know everything. And uh, so I told all of the folks in the industry, insurance company and agents and what have you, that I have an open door. Come and talk to me uh, because sitting in my ivory tower, I don't know how things are going down on the street and working. Mm -hmm. And so come and tell me about it. And uh, I told them, you know, I am going to make decisions. Uh, you know, I want to hear from you, but then I have to make decisions that right. I think are best for all the people of Hawaii. And I know we're not going to agree on some and stuff. And we never do. Now, you were in uh, the insurance commissioner for how long? 2003 to 2010. Well, for seven years there. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, was yeah. A, that was a nice stint. Yes. Well, I don't, I, as far as we could tell, the longest that anybody could stay on the job. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, don't get us started. We were we were appointees too, and we've gone through it. Yeah. I went eight years before I went yeah. postal. Yeah. He made it what two? Yeah, yeah two years. Yeah. Yeah. Two little bit, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I I went over to uh, help the Obamacare implementation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're. We saw how much right. successful that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the current sure. insurance commissioner Gordon Ito has actually been there longer. Yeah, okay. And he was my deputy when I was there. So. Okay, yeah, and I know Gordon. So, I yeah, Gordon. but... He, uh, he got to be there during the uh, Obamacare implementation. Yes. Fact, yes. He, he did a nice job he there, accused, too, he, was, he accused <laughs> me of leaving because <laughs> of that. <laughs> <coming> <laughs> well, but, it wasn't really the fact that you were running out the door <laughs> that, that gave that indication, but... Yeah. Anyway. yeah. So, tell me a little bit about Abaris Global. Like, who is Abaris well, Global? Well, I just set up Abaris Global because I began doing consulting work. Okay. Um, and uh, I was doing consulting work for the Ethereum Foundation, okay. which is based in Zug, Switzerland. And Ethereum is the second largest uh, cryptocurrency 
uh, by capitalization, right Market behind cap. Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, the big difference is, though, that Bitcoin, is the, the underlying structure is the blockchain, and the blockchain for Bitcoin basically just supports the currency, uh, the Bitcoin. Ethereum uh, is 20-year-old genius Vitalik Buterin figured out how to set up the blockchain so you could do transactions on it and smart contracts. Right. And uh, so, uh, so that uh, has turned it into a very useful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I went uh, out to Zoog a couple of times and helped them out with uh, uh, corporate board meetings. Uh, I helped them out working with their Swiss regulator, FINMA, uh, and a variety of other things. And then uh, I uh, gave a presentation at the first decentralized insurance conference, mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, insurance on the blockchain. And uh, the government of Mexico asked me to, uh, to give a presentation at their uh, uh, at their Future of Insurance and Securities International Seminar. So, so I've been working on, on those types of things. Uh, and, and, and so and I'm just, I brought it up, so Ethereum right now is trading at uh, 51 billion market right. cap, number two next, right. to, next to Bitcoin. Right. Um, and right. Um, number three is Ripple, which has popped up to 27 billion and Bitcoin Cash is now at 14 billion. So, we're in that, you know, this, this, this is the, the top four. These have been the ones that have been doing right. the, the, the movement. Right. Um, the, you know, the blockchains are a little bit different, like you said, under right. each one of those types of currencies. Right. Um, I liked your presentation I saw on the insurance. was what you, you see, that what could happen in the future of insurance. Right. You got a lot of questions on that, um, <laughs> on that, yeah. th that presentation, I noticed. Because yeah. people are confused. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is, the thing is, with the blockchain, it is so new and innovative that the way we regulate uh, things now uh, doesn't really fit for it. Mm -hmm. And so it has to be changed. And uh, it's taken a little while for the regulators to figure out what's going on, to figure out, okay, well, what's the best way to deal with it? And uh, unfortunately, right now, that has resulted in a lot of uncertainty Right. and what you can and can't do right. uh, until they work that out. Now, the past year, um, when uh, the regulators were kind of hanging fire, uh, the cryptocurrencies uh, exploded, uh, and a number of initial coin offerings were made. A right. number of, of uh, developers said, look, it, I got this great development that I can put on the blockchain that can help with medical records or financial transactions or transportation tracking. Food tracking if you're Walmart. Food tracking, all sorts of things. Right. And uh, I'm going to issue my own coins uh, instead of Bitcoin or Ether. Uh, most of those were built on the Ether platform mm -hmm. because, again, that allows for transactions. And they issued their own uh, uh, coins, ICOs, uh, generating billions of dollars uh, and uh, resulted in uh, a very large increase in the value of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Oh, yeah. When you look at this whole, other, the whole thing, this market cap of the, the whole industry is at $342 billion in the, uh, in the coin space. And unfortunately, I, I know they use the word coin and it gives everybody think that, th that thinks that, that it's money, but right. it, it, it really is. It just, it's, a, it's a form of transaction recordation. That's how I try to explain to someone. Yes. That. Yes. If Bitcoin got into it you know, from the money perspective, but right. you, you mentioned, like, think of what will change the insurance industry right. on how you track an insurance policy claim and right. anything related to it, whether it be right. personal liability, health care, auto, home, Right. Whatever it may be, all that's going to change because of that disruptive blockchain technology. Right, right. Uh, with blockchain, um, because of its structure, because it's so efficient and it's transparent and it's far more secure than the way we store information right. these days. Uh, Talk to the IRS. Deloitte <laughs> has said that um, if insurance companies put their internal operations on the blockchain, uh, underwriting, uh, claims processing, 
holding the information, uh, they can save 35% of their costs. Wow. So insurance companies can save 35% of their costs. Just cost. pushing the paper. Yeah. Right, to, to eliminate a lot of that. Yep. The to make it much more not efficient. The payment of a claim. Right. right. And, that's and it also becomes much more secure. It's more transparent. Uh, so it's better for uh, the clients, the customers. It's also better for the regulators because it's transparent to the regulators in real time. Yep. So instead of having to wait till the end of the year to get your annual financial statement from the insurance company and saying, well, what the heck have they been doing? Uh, you can track them real time uh, on, if they're on the blockchain. So it's helpful for, you know, for, for that, and that's why it's so disruptive. It's helpful for everybody. Yep. And the key word you just ways. used there is it's disruptive. Right. It's disruptive like the internet was disruptive. Right. Right. And we've talked right. about this. It's like just think right. of what the internet has done to our societies, societies worldwide over the past 10 years. Right. And what do you think blockchain is going to do over the next right. 10 years? Right. And, and some have said it's going to be even more disruptive. I think so. Uh, World Economic Forum. I mean, these, and these are not just, you know, folks talking through the top of their hat. World Economic Forum. So this is the future infrastructure of finance. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, so it's very exciting. It's still developing, uh, and uh, so it's very interesting. The one thing to keep in mind, I mean, one thing you know, they they have all sorts of uh, articles out there on the tons internet now, about tons. it, and they have tons about it as an investment. Yeah. Now I just kind of ignore all those. Yeah. Because no, they they don't know how to analyze it. They're trying to use old analytics to analyze whether it's going to go up or down. Yeah, the, sho the shoulders, investment. head and shoulders. Everybody's going, oh, it's going to go up. We should trade right. now. You should sell it. It doesn't work. Right. And instead, I look for the articles that deal with the blockchain, the underlying infrastructure, and to see what kind of developments are on there, to see where it's going. And as they have more and more applications developed, uh, then uh, it becomes worth more. Uh, but it's also, uh, you know, fascinating how they do the new developments. And in doing the developments, it's also important to keep separate the blockchains that are permissioned blockchains that companies are doing for their internal operations. Right. And because they make it more efficient, like Deloitte said. Uh, and peer-to-peer -peer blockchains. And that's where it's really going to be disruptive. I just saw an article that said, well, Blockchain is not so much disruptive, it's foundational because it's going to pro provide a new foundation for how we do business. And I think that's true, particularly for these permission blockchains peer that the corporations peer. are doing. Yep. But peer-to-peer -peer is going to be very disruptive yep. because then you don't have to go through any company. No. You go directly person-to-person -person person. for, for anything and, uh, and you can trust that that transaction is going to happen. Think of what, you know, you, and you're very familiar with what it's going to do to the insurance industry. Think of what it's going to do to the real estate industry. Yes. I think the real estate industry, I mean, I, the I real just, estate agent could go away. Yes. With, the, with, with what happens with yes. the blockchain. I just saw an article that Moody's said, again, you know, not some fly-by-night operation. Right. Uh, folks that everybody trusts in their analytics Moody said that uh, the mortgage industry could save $1 billion by going on the blockchain. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a tremendous benefit. Uh, it's going to be a big change. You said, you know, they may get real, real estate agents, escrow agents. Uh, some folks have said they're going to get rid of lawyers. Y yeah. Yay! Yay! No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, an oh, I'm a yeah. lawyer. Wait a minute. What do you call a busload <laughs> of attorneys going over a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> a relief. I don't know. <laughs> a good start. <laughs> a good start. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Uh, so, yeah. anyway, so actually, believe it or not, we, we, we burned through the first like 14 minutes of this, so we're going to take, sure. a, take a little break, break because you're giving test. You're, you've been asked by the legislature down at the big square building over there to sure. give some guidance and advice. I refused to go because I would, I would, like I said, I would go on the dark side and I'd get all hostile with them. <laughs> so uh, I refused to go, but you, you've been going down there and advising them. So I'd like to hear what you're getting from sure. them and, and, and convey that sure. to, to our viewers. So sure. uh, Gordo Texar, Rick the Funmeister, JP, Schmidt Esquire. I like saying Esquire. I wrote Esquire when I was a little kid on my, <laughs> on, on my report card. It didn't go over well. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute after we pay some bills. 
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Aloha, how you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome back to the second half of Ibachi Talk. Good old buddy, Rick's the Funds, Funds, Fundsmeister. Fundsmeister. Can't They're talk anymore. Now, huh? We got J.P. Schmidt Esquire, who's um, uh, former with the Insurance Commission and um, now an advisor with the Ethereum Foundation. Knows a lot about blockchain, giving us a real good perspective on it. So in the second half of the show, what I'd like to talk about though is because you've been requested by the legislature to come down and be providing I'll call it guidance. I don't know what else to say. Um, I mean, I was requested and I tried a couple times and I tried to rehearse and I kept getting hostile. So I, I just stopped. Because when they, when they shut down Coinbase here, I essentially lost yes, my lunch. Yes, um, well, that's, that's I know, because there was a lack of understanding. Yes, yes. And so, but I'm glad you're down there yes. because you're, you're calm, cool, and collected. So, and they you. probably pay attention to you and not me. So, so, so what's happening down there in the big square uh, building? Well, they are considering some bills uh, that would hopefully bring Coinbase back to Hawaii. Um, and uh, I mean, they, they, I went down there to testify as an individual. So, I mean, it's not that they asked me to come, uh, but uh, I went down there and testify because uh, the situation is not good right now. Uh, where 49 states uh, allow for uh, exchanges uh, to be money transmitters and for people to access exchanges to trade and exchange right. uh, virtual currency, uh, at, all except Hawaii. But, yeah. Now, and, there's uh, ways around it, though. Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's ways there's around way, it. There's ways around it, but... Which it shouldn't be. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd rather do it the right way than to do workarounds. Right. Uh, and uh, so they've had a couple of bills in the legislature to try to rectify the situation. Uh, one bill submitted by the director of uh, uh, financial institutions, Division of Financial Institutions, and one bill that was submitted that is a Uniform Law Commission bill, which there's a... Uniform group. Law Commission bill. Yeah, there's a group. Uh, uniform. Why do I feel like we're going to form another department with a multi-million dollar <laughs> budget that doesn't? You know, we'll pay them in Bitcoin. Yeah, or well, Ethereum. the the Uniform Law Commission bill uh, it doesn't seem to be getting traction, uh, and it's uh, no other state has adopted it, mm -hmm. and it's gotten a uh, criticism from a number of folks in the industry. Uh, the bill by the uh, uh, director of DFI, uh, allows it in the uh, money transmitter bill and allows for certain things that Coinbase had it had a problem with, primarily that a money transmitter has to put aside uh, in dollars and cash or other fiat things, currency the, the amount to match how much they are dealing with. In case there's a problem, they can cover both. So let's get into that just for a little bit, because you know, this is where I get irritated. Because the banks are money transfer organizations, right? Yeah, except they're exempt. Except they're exempt, <laughs> okay. But they still are money transfer <laughs> yes. organizations, and they yes. don't have to keep 100% fiat money no, in the bank. They don't. No bank does, no, no, they keep about no, 8%. No, no. Yeah. Now, no, Coinbase could have kept 8%, right. but no, our People down at the, see I'm getting all myself by knickers in a knot here. These guys down at the square barrel over at square barrel, the guys that, <laughs> commercial. Anyway, the guys down at the square building over there, they wanted to put a hundred percent fiat currency in the bank. Right, 
Right. It's crazy. And, and uh, I mean, that's how the money transmitter law is written for other money transmitters. Now, they, this bill changes it so that they can put virtual currency in there mm -hmm. uh, as the, uh, 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 the amount uh, in reserve. Uh, and so that, you know, I mean, Coinbase and other exchanges said, look, you know, we've already got all this virtual currency back and all of it. Yeah, let me and put that's what we deal with. So, you know, putting fiat in there, putting dollars in there is crazy. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, and, and Bitcoin is now trading at $138 billion in the, and $8 billion in transactions, no, $6 billion in transactions in the past 24 hours. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. You know, so, 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 I mean, there was a ton of my associates. We all had to bail and went elsewhere. Right. Um, so it's, it's, well, I'll just leave it alone. Okay. Right. So, right. are you and, waking and them up so down there? I, <laughs> well, I, I hope so. And, and one of the things that when I go to the legislature, I mean, one of the primary things is, is to try to educate the legislators. Right, right. Now, you know, on behalf of the legislators, right. they have... Thousands of bills a lot going on. that they have to go through, that they have to try to get some kind of understanding on. This is a very complex new area that many people, most people, don't understand. So they're saying, oh, you know, well, what is this? We want to protect consumers. And yeah, and, and that's what that. that was the line I got. We want to right. protect you. And I said, you don't understand. You don't even understand what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and I, I proposed to the legislature a draft bill that would exempt virtual currency from the money transmitter law because virtual currency is not money. Yeah. It's not money. And, an uh, and so it doesn't, again, it doesn't quite fit. IRS calls it an asset. Right. Well, and this is, uh, I was talking about the confusion with the different regulators now. Uh, the problem is these federal regulators, uh, CFTC calls it a commodity. Yeah. IRS calls it a currency, SEC calls it a security, uh, states have called it property, and, and normally the definition of property is left to states. Uh, so, you know, so what is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, so they're, they're, they're looking at applying all these different things to it that don't necessarily fit. Um, uh, FinCEN, I think, said, well, look at, you know, uh, any exchange has to abide by all the banking regulations. Right. And, uh, of course, the SEC says you have to comply with all the securities regulations when you're issuing coins with these ICOs. Right, these initial coin offerings. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, CFTC says, well, it's a commodity. Uh, and uh, uh, they have actually worked to... Uh, allow for ETFs and other investment vehicles that hold virtual currency to be traded on the uh, uh, Commodities and Future Trading Well, Well, see, Chicago Board of Options, you can right. buy cryptocurrencies on, on that exchange. Right. right. You can buy futures on there. Right. Um, there's a couple of publicly traded stocks out there now right. that are in that they buy and trade and sell cryptocurrencies, and you can buy into them, not as a... You buy into them just like you're buying a stock with Amazon, right? And they're out there doing that, you know, right. outside of the state, right. but they're they're doing it. That's how I can do it that way if I right. want to, right? So. And uh, the head of the SEC and the CFTC went before Congress a month or so ago, and they uh, to tell them about uh, what they're doing in the area of virtual currency, and they said that well, look at you know we recognize the tremendous benefits that this area, this new innovation can this have. blockchain, yep. And so we are proceeding with, uh, from a standpoint of do no harm, mm -hmm. uh, which is great, except they then go and subpoena all sorts of uh, exchanges and ICOs and, they went and after take all these actions all these in a very right. traditional way. Now, uh, uh, UK, United Kingdom, uh, has set up a sandbox, a yes. regulator's sandbox. And they say, okay, look at these folks that are developing things in, with <coughs> the blockchain can come to the sandbox. Want <coughs> some water here? They can be there. It's okay for, you, you know, for a short period. We will, the regulators will work with them. We'll give no action letters and give them some leeway on some of the regulations and stuff 
to see how this develops. Now that helps both the regulators and that helps the developers to see, okay, you know, what kind of regulations am I going to run into? Right. You know, how can I develop this thing? And they've had several um, cohorts. And in October, they did a, a very interesting report on what they've learned from it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one of the things they said is that everyone who came through uh, the process ended up getting significant funding once they got out. Mm. Because once they got through it, you know, and the, and the ideas had been vetted and how to do it, and the regulators had become familiar with it, then people want to invest in it. So, you know, let's see how this works. So we're we're winding down. We got a few more minutes, but I want to give you I want to give you a chance to give us give us some future think here on blockchain and what you okay. what you think might happen from a regulatory, from a legal standpoint, um, societal, cultural, whatever. Just okay. you get, give us your kind of thoughts on that space. Okay. Well, the um, well the regulators are going to have to. Uh, do a, a steep learning curve here and, and get a handle on it right. so that they have a better understanding on it. Harvard Business Review said, look, it, in a digital world, we can't regulate the same way. And, and you know, we have to look at different ways of regulating. Um, I expect that they will push for that. IFC, the International uh, uh, Financial uh, Commission, uh, and uh, uh, European, various European commissions and boards, Japan, Singapore, you know, all of the different areas around the world are looking at this uh, and recognize the benefits and looking at, well, how, how do we deal with this? Right. Okay, so uh, I predict that they will figure it out, okay? Uh, and uh, we'll get something better. It will be a rocky road and what have you, but They'll get something that will allow it. Uh, the blockchains currently one are working <laughs> on are working on problems of scalability. Yep. Dealing with lots and lots, lots of, of transactions. Of transactions. Yep. And uh, and security and and I believe they will work those out and then it will be uh, even more useful. Uh, and uh, and as I said, peer to peer will be extremely that's business, disrupted. That's the business because the business you can business. go out into rural areas, into uh, third world countries and what have you, don't have insurance, don't have financial services, and with peer to peer, they can get those financial insurance uh, uh, services and insurance, and that will be extremely disruptive. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we and do beneficial and beneficial. We burned through thirty minutes. Um, hopefully, we can get you back here in the future, JP, because sure. it's you know this is a disruptive technology. Case closed. The world yeah. is going to change as a result of it. You better pay attention to this, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, because it's yeah. going to change the way people live. Yeah. We'll be talking about this ten years from going like, well, how come yeah. we never got over this? Anyway, JP, thank you so much for joining sure. us today. It was terrific to have you here. I forgot the solo cups today, so I didn't get you your autograph <laughs> solo cup. Uh, so I'll get you up. That, that'll lure you to the next show. Okay. Mr. Funmeister, it's always a pleasure having you here. Thanks for joining us on Avachi Talk. And like I say at the end of your show, one, two, three, how you doing? How you doing?